Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Gotta keep... Testing, testing, testing. Thank you. Good morning. We welcome you in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Pentecost, and so we are arrayed in red to remind us that the Spirit moves among us. A number of announcements before we continue with our worship. In a few moments, we're going to be welcoming Pastor Chris, who was a former pastor of this parish, and she now serves one of our companion ministries, which is the ELCA Church on the Street. So she'll be sharing the gospel with us this morning. Also a reminder that a little later in the service, we'll be having Holy Communion at Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer. Holy Communion is open to all baptized Christians. So please feel free to commune with us regardless of what congregation you belong to. We'll be adding to our prayer list this morning, Alberta Fre Frerich, um, who's going to Mayo for some testing, and also for uh, Wendell Knudsen, who is the grandparent of uh, Jordan Knudsen. So we'll add those to our prayers. Now we move to the font as we remember and give thanks for the waters of baptism. Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ. And we are a new creation for this saving mystery and for this water. Let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You opened the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water. Awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, praise, and glory, and thanksgiving 
now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Spirit of Gentleness. up the mountain from the valleys of sleep and over the eons you call to each thing as awake from your slumbers and rise on the wing spirit Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. swept through the desert you stung with the sand and you goaded your people with the law and the land and when they were blinded with idols and lies then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of rentalness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of rest, Stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill. Then you whispered in silence when the whole world stood still. And down in the city, you called once again. When you blew through your people in the rush of a wind. Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes, from the bondage of sorrow, all the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes, and bold new decisions, your people arise.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God, let, and for the unity of all, let us pray, pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. All the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please pray with me. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Romans 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you re received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends the first reading. Our preaching text for today is Acts 2. It's the story of the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven 
There came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astounded, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, and Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter Standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I just have to personally say that it is wonderful to be back here at Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer. I served here as an associate pastor beginning in 2008, and I was here for eight years. And then I left to be an associate pastor down at Peace Lutheran on the west side of Sioux Falls. And then just six months ago, I was called by the South Dakota Senate ELCA to serve as the pastor at Church on the Street. And just a side note, my husband who served here as... um, He was the visitation pastor for a while. He is now part-time at St. Paul's in Humboldt, and he also works with the bishop. So if you are curious about Nicaragua and Cameroon, you can talk to him. (coughs) Excuse me. You might also be interested to know that my undergraduate degree is social work. And after earning that bachelor's degree, I spent a year in Milwaukee as a Lutheran Volunteer Corps member serving an inner city Milwaukee church. And then I went to seminary. So my call to church on the street um, was not a surprise. My mom said, oh, hey, you're going to take that call, aren't you? And I said, I don't know, mom. I really like it here at Peace. And she said, this is the call you have been waiting for your entire life. So let me tell you about Church on the Street, because it was right here 
when Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer hosted the Senate Assembly back in 2016, that I heard Pastor Rebel. She was here and she was telling about this new ministry in Sioux Falls, this place that was going to walk with folks experiencing hunger and poverty, homelessness. And I thought, wow, that is absolutely a spirit-filled ministry. She went on to say that Church on the Street's mission is to take the gifts of the church out to the people who, for whatever reason, cannot come inside. So whether we are out visiting on the streets or here visiting a congregation, when we're at meetings with people to discuss the services that are already provided for those marginalized, the most often question we get is why? Why don't you just invite people to all of the ELCA churches down in Sioux Falls and call it good? Well, that might work for some, but others need more. And so we go out and we introduce ourselves. We wear loud t-shirts, which are recognizable on the streets in Sioux Falls. And then we listen to people's entire story. We share kind words about how wonderful it is to get to know them. And then we invite them to join in the ministry. You see, we don't ask the people who are unhoused to come into a worshiping community where they may not be able to read the bulletin or that where they may be uncomfortable with how long it has been since they were able to shower. We don't ask folks to put money in an offering plate because what little money they have, they need to live. We don't expect them to stand at the appropriate times or know what it means to share the peace. We expect none of those things. Church on the Street's sole expectation is that the Holy Spirit is going to show up in amazing and new ways. The work being done is the Holy Spirit, and that Spirit surrounds us and those we encounter with compassion, acceptance, and understanding that whatever has or whatever will happen, the people that we meet are whole and are already loved by God. And so to be a church so dependent on the Spirit, when I got the invitation to come and preach today, I said, oh, it's Pentecost. This is exactly who we all are as church together. Because did you know that the faithful have gathered on Pentecost since the Jewish people first started to gather and celebrate the first fruits of the harvest. That celebration of Pentecost then became a celebration of the law given to Moses. And so the Jews who were gathered on the day of Pentecost, when Jesus had been died and resurrected as they gathered for that Pentecost celebration, it was then that the Spirit rushed in, showed up, and did a whole new thing. And did you realize that that celebration, the celebration of Pentecost, continues with you in this space, in this gathering? You see, God is still at work in this place, calling the faithful to live and to dream and to ask what God is doing next, especially in this time of transition. Now, we all know that folks can be cynical. We just have to look back to the accusations, judgments, and closed-mindedness against those disciples. People were saying they're drunk. But that's not what was happening. We need to look at this scripture and look at what God is up to because God is doing something new. You see, our old ways of thinking and doing in this passage, they're literally blown into oblivion by the rush of the Holy Spirit. 
And it is in this awesome rush of the Spirit where there is prophecy and visions and dreaming. And even upon the slaves, the Bible says, I will pour out my Spirit and they shall prophesy. So in this celebration, the Spirit of God is for every one of us. And the Spirit continues to work in and through us as this movement continues today. Because God has created us to be a people who are centered in the word of God and who are nourished in the sacraments. And when we continue this movement, we are church together. I have to say that I have so many vivid memories of the way that the Spirit has already shown up in the communities where I have served as pastor. I am frequently moved with awe and wonder at the Spirit's work, and as I see familiar faces here, I know that there are so many times that the Spirit has been present when we have been together. So from my time here and through my call at peace, and now at church on the street, I can tell you the Spirit is at work in our midst. The Spirit is there at those beautiful moments when we gather for sacraments. The Spirit is especially present when we gather at bedsides. The Spirit is here in our gathering this morning. The Spirit shows up in these unexpected places. And so we do God's work as faithful volunteers. At Church on the Street, it does look a lot different than it did here at Lutheran Church of our Redeemer. <coughs> I have to share that I wasn't even a month into this new call when I um, went walking down 8th Street where the Bishop Dudley, it's a homeless shelter and the banquet and all of these places are, I was walking with our uh, coordinator for Laundry with Love and as we were walking down the street, um, like we frequently do, we ran into someone that she knew and we stopped and introductions were made. And then in that moment, this gentleman says, I need to pray and bless you. And so he grabbed our hands and he began to pray in both English and in Lakota, praying that the spirit would be pour poured out upon us as we walked the streets, praying blessing, praying protection. And then it was just last week that I heard his voice again. I had a backpack on and we wear these loud shirts so that people know we're church on the street. And from the back seat of a car at a stop sign, I hear, hey, Pastor Chris, what are you doing out here walking alone? I said, I'm walking the streets, just sharing a little blessing from my backpack today. It's all good. And he yells back out, no, you are walking these streets today and you are not alone. God is with you. That reminder that we are church together wherever we are. So whether we are gathered here at Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer, whether we're on the streets of Sioux Falls, whether we're gathered as the South Dakota Synod or in Nicaragua or Cameroon or anywhere in the world, we celebrate this work of the Spirit that feeds us with the Word, nourishes us with the sacraments, and gives us visions and dreams and prophecy to live into the Spirit's call. Part of this living into the Spirit's call at church on the street began as we listened to story after story, trying to realize where the struggles were and where we may be able to come alongside and fill some needs. 
One of those needs that each and every one of us has daily is the need for clean clothing. In order to go to school and work, that's quite important. And so a ministry called Laundry with Love was born, where twice a month folks are able to get free laundry service. They come and we give out quarters. But we also always have a partner that not only brings quarters, but brings a meal. And in the laundromat, there is amazing fellowship. So I have to tell you about um, the time that I met a guy that we will call Mitchell. He wandered into the laundromat because somebody at one of the shelters had told him um, he could go to the laundromat and even though he wasn't signed up for laundry, he would be able to get a meal and there would be people there and he could share in some conversation. Well, he found me. I had my Pastor Chris name tag on and he kind of wandered over and shared that he had spent the night before at Avera Behavioral Hospital and that he was released and that he was not looking forward to spending the coming night in one of the shelters. We talked for a bit and then he's from out of town and he used my phone to make a couple of long distance calls and when he handed me my phone back I happened to notice that he had on the most beautiful red fingernail polish and so I complimented that and he got a little defensive and said well yeah, church, what are you going to say about my red nails kind of a thing? And I simply got to say, with church on the street, you are only going to find love and acceptance. I could tell that he was just hungry for community. He kind of wandered around and met with different folks, but was awkwardly engaging. And for hours, he would come up and share a little bit of his story or show me something funny that he had downloaded over Wi-Fi on his phone. So after the meal, and as laundry is happening and his underwear is being handed out, um, there's a great bread store in town called Breadsmith. And on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock, Church on the Street picks up the leftover bread for the day. So I happened to be standing by Mitchell as this, like, two uh, large trash bags full of loaves of bread came in the door. And at this point, he's pretty comfortable, and he just loudly exclaims, Really? There's bread coming in the door, and it's multiplying? I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus didn't walk through that door next. And that told me a number of things. This person who was heading for a shelter who just got out of a Vera Behavioral Hospital, this is someone who has been told the stories from the Bible. He knows that if there is a meal, there is fellowship, there is prayer, there is bread and it's multiplying, this has to be a place of Jesus. And so on Tuesday nights, the laundromat is a place that Jesus shows up for people repeatedly. And so as we do this work, whether it's here or in my current call, we know that we have this promise. This promise that the Spirit is going to show up and move in new and beautiful and in unexpected ways. We know that this Spirit is going to open us up to dream dreams, to prophesy, and to see visions. And we know that God is going to blow through our cynicism and doubts, bringing forgiveness and wholeness, and sending us back out to bring this word of God into the world, wherever we are. And so today I say thanks to God for each of you, for the ways that the Spirit moves in each of us and sends us out to the world in need. Amen.
It's time for our offering. And so if you have some coins you want to make a little noise with, here is our bucket for the noisy offering. And while you're doing that, let's give a warm welcome to Pastor Chris. We're so pleased that you're with us. And if we're allowed, I think we can be proud of you too. So thank you so much for your ministry. Our mission for the month is St. Dismas of South Dakota, Lutheran congregations behind prison walls. So all of our noisy offering and loose offerings for this month go to that. Um, <clears throat> throughout the summer and actually throughout the year, we're doing God's works, our hands. So we ask that you'd watch your bulletin for opportunities for you to participate in that. Um, we need volunteers for sandwich ministries. Cookies are needed. And uh, if you'd like to uh, come and work here 9 to 10 a.m. on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and be part of a ministry that feeds thousands of people each year. So we very much appreciate your participation in that. Pastor Chris has a table in the back there where you can learn more about um, the church on the street and uh, find out a little bit more about that. We are going to go down and worship with them on Saturday, July 9th, and so all of you will have an opportunity to experience that. It is truly a marvelous ministry. Um, strategic planning group will be meeting on Tuesday night. Uh, as I told you last week, 400 of you completed um, surveys. We appreciate that very much. And there was more than 130 of you who were together for a gathering on Tuesday night to the strategic planning group. They are going to present um, the outcome of those things. And plus, since four of you uh, did, comp or 400 of you did complete this, they're going to do some uh, terrible things with pies to staff members and to your elected leaders. So they're going to plan when this great pie event is going to take place, and uh, all of us uh, will look pie-eyed, I guess. Um, I believe that is all of our announcements, um, and so we continue with prayers. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the Lord of the resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Holy, living one, holy, moving one, both burst open our locked doors, and by your Spirit, drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. We thank you for the ministry of church on the street and ask that as the Spirit burns through that ministry, wherever it may be, you may empower persons to encounter the living Christ. Feed and care for all creatures that remain hidden to us and yet contribute to the vibrancy of our creation and especially be with all who are hungry. God, in your mercy, Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy and for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers, those who proclaim to the deaf, those who proclaim to persons far away. Comfort all who live in constant fear and for any who are suffering in any way. Today especially we pray for the refugees from Ukraine and also for those who suffer in the midst of gun violence. We also pray for those who are ill, for Melanie, for Judy, for Chuck, for Carla, for Mandy, for Alberta, for Wendell. Also be with those who grieve the friends and family of Orville Schultz, and Kareen Elmore. Give them the assurance of your presence and let your healing spirit flow through and among them. God, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
It was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. On this day when we remember the power of the Holy Spirit, and as we're gathered in one place, we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. For all is now ready. Today we will will be receiving Holy Communion by intinction, which simply means dipping. You'll be offered the bread as the body of Christ. We ask that you would respond by saying amen and then dip the bread into the wine. The dark colored uh, liquid is wine and the light colored liquid is grape juice. Come to the banquet for all is now ready.
blood, the blood, body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace and peace now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, the offer of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.